this is module number nine, which is related to regulatory strategies. So now we'll start that. So what are the regulations in pharmaceutical industry? So pharmaceutical industry, pharmaceutical market is a highly regulated market or uh, it is a highly regulated industry. So from starting like when the drug is discovered till the drug in the market and even after that, the drug product is regulated. There are various guidelines which are to be followed at every stage starting from the drug development process till uh, starting from the drug development process till the drug enters into the market and even after that. So, so we can say that whole life cycle of the drug is regulated at each and every point by different regulations and guidelines. So regulatory affairs plays a, a crucial role in pharmaceutical industry and is involved in all uh, in all the stages of drug development and also after drug approval in marketing. So regulatory affairs, it plays a very important, very crucial role in pharmaceutical industry because it is involved in all the stages of drug development, starting from drug discovery to drug development till marketing of the drug even after that. The drug which are developed, uh, the drug development process as we have discussed at that, it is a lengthy, complex and very costly uh, process. So pharmaceutical companies, uh, they, uh, the pharmaceutical companies, the data which is accumulated or which is collected at the time of drug discovery and the development stage. So they use that data, they file that uh, dossier to register, to get the drug register so that they can market the drug. Okay. And regulatory affairs, they also ensures that the maintenance of the, or the marketing license that uh, can be or a marketing license and leads life cycle extension activities such as broadening the indication of the drug. So now when the drug marketing authorization holder, they have got the marketing license, then they can have the, uh, they can extend the life cycle of the drug, such as they can broaden the indication of the drug, change of, they can change the formulation, change in doses form, etc. So such activities are done so that the life cycle of the drug can be increased. Then regulatory agencies and organizations play a vital role to meet the requirements of legal procedures relating to drug development. So there are various regulatory agencies, regulatory staff is there, the company, they have their own regulatory staff. There are various regulatory agencies and organizations which play a very important role in meeting the requirements of like the legal procedures and the requirements during the drug development purpose uh, processes in the country. So pharmaceutical regulations across the world play an important role in ensuring the safety and efficacy of the approved drug to, show, to ensure that the drug which is produced, it is of good quality, safety and efficacy. The, pharmaco the pharmaceutical regulations were introduced and they are followed all over the world. Okay. And also these uh, regulations are introduced to regulate the price, high price of the drugs. Regulators are required both for new innovations and already existing products. Uh, products that can be produced domestically and those imported from other countries require regulation. So for all the products, whether they are the new innovations, whether they are the old products, whether they are manufactured at, uh, at home or means in the country or they have been exported from uh, or they have been imported from other countries, they have, they have all the different regulations which are to be followed. So every country has its own regulations which apply to innovation, manufacturing, drug testing, marketing, and post-marketing studies. So starting from when the drug is discovered, then when the drug is manufactured, then too there are guidelines. Then for safety testing, for safety analysis of the drug, there are the guidelines and for Marketing and po even after the post-marketing, the post-marketing studies or the aggregate reports are submitted. So for that also, there is a, a rule or regulation. Then during the 20th century, there were no laws and regulations to monitor the safety and uh, safety of the drug. So before 20th century, there were no rules as such which are made by the government so that the uh, regulations to and monitor and uh, like regulations which are related to that drug can be uh, the uh, the that can be the public can be made aware of it so that they do not use that medicine. So there are various unfortunate events which occurred and due to which the regulations were developed. So unfortunate events have synthesized the development of medicines medicines regulations more than the evaluation of knowledge base. First is the sulfonylamide disaster. 
So what happened in this? In the year 1937, there are 100 people in United States who died due to ethylene glycol poisoning because the it uses sulfonamide elixir and in that dye ethyl ethylene glycol is added, which leads to their death, which is used the chemical uh, as a solvent without any safety testing. So it is this dye uh, dye ethylene glycol. This is used as a chemical solvent without any safety testing. The facilitated introduction of the Federal Food and Drug Cosmetics Act with the pre-market notification required for requirement for new drugs in 1938. So since then, after the sulfonylamide disaster has been occurred, the FDA Department uh, or Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act with the pre-market notification, they notifies that all new drugs in 1938 or even after that, they need to be registered. The next example is of Tuxchi in, uh, study. So Tuxchi's study of untreated cephalis in the Negro uh, male was an ethnically abusive study conducted between 1932 and 1972 by the United States Public Health Service, PHS. So now there was a study which was conducted known as the Tuxchi uh, study in which the untreated cephalis uh, uh, like... Uh, uh, the to the Negroes because there is a racism going in their country. So to the Negroes, they were forcefully included in the study and no drug was given to them to treat their syphilis. They were not on any drug and when their condition become worsened, even some cases they are, they died as well. So participants informed consent form here in this case, it is not collected. The purpose of this study was to observe the natural history of like what is the natural history of untreated cephalis, but the written report is not there, uh, is not uh, a written informed consent form or written report was not there. Then participants in the study, they told that uh, they were receiving free health care from the federal government of the United States, but they were not. They were actually, it was a kind of a trial which was conducted, but they were not receiving any kind of a free medication of the treatment, okay? Then uh, by 1943, penicillin was a treatment of choice for cephalis, but the participants in the study were not offered treatment. So by 1943, penicillin was considered as a treatment for cephalis, but the participants, they are not receiving any kind of uh, drug, okay? So the study was ethically incorrect or it was ethically injustified. So now why these regulations are required? What is the purpose? What is the objective of these regulations? So no drug product, it is completely safe and effectious in all circumstances. There are certain products which I am benefited by that product, but maybe a new, the, there is some adverse effect which is seen. So there is a normal as well as legal expectation that appropriate steps are taken to ensure optimal quality, safety and efficacy, that is benefit versus risk. So now, uh, the, uh, now it is a moral responsibility of the regulators as well as the manufacturers, marketing authorization holder, that they should take the appropriate steps to assure the quality and safety and efficacy of the drug. Drug development process, as we know, it is a highly complex process and therefore it is essential to manage the process starting from beginning till the end effectively. Okay, to end the permit of favorable evaluation, efficacy and safety in the shortest possible time. Then to ensure safety, quality and efficacy of the drug products in order to assure uh, so that the public health can be uh, protected. Otherwise, the drugs, they are there for our health so that we can come out of a disease. But what happens if the adverse drug reaction occurs and we then go, uh, then uh, maybe by taking that drug, we may suffer from any type of adverse event, which is not good from public health point of view. So hence, it is very important to maintain and to ensure the safety, quality and efficacy of the drug. So this is a product life cycle. This we have discussed earlier also. Like first the laboratory animal test is done, then IND is filed. So there are two. Uh, so after that phase one, phase two, phase three studies are there. Then NDA is filed, and when NDA is approved, the drug enters in the market. And then when the drug enters in the market, after that the uh, pharmacovigilance studies take place. Now, uh, role of regulatory affairs during the drug development phase. What is the role of regulatory affairs during that phase? So ensure that the legislative requirements are not made. So the, there are a lot of responsibilities which are paid by the regulatory affairs team or the regulatory managers during 
the drug approval and uh, drug uh, approval and development phase first of all they ensure or they arrange for the scientific advice from the authorities they also advise on the development studies to demonstrate their how to demonstrate their safety quality and efficacy then after that they, the regulatory strategy set up so regulatory professionals they play an important role in the regulatory strategy setup they participate in uh, full func cross functional project teams they they ensure that the applications or like guidelines are being applied everywhere okay and they also prepare and the submit the applications for the clinical trial for the conduct of the clinical trial process then managing the next is managing and preparation of regulatory submission so when uh, the when if a well planned regulatory submission is done then there will be the less time will required for the drug to enter in the market okay and uh, it, uh, you can take that it will provides advice on the global development plan as well next is to optimize the submission strategies like uh, there will be if the regulatory uh, regulate regulations are followed guidelines are followed then efficacy uh, will be seen in the dossier preparation okay our internal company relations or project management to so interact with commercial side of business and come up with the good price and the reimbursement for your company when you are working for them so these are the few benefits of the regulatory affairs in a company now what are the role of regulatory affairs at the approval phase so check on progress of evaluation and anticipate questions clarify raised questions plan response and strategies with other department so first you have to check your own progress your progress of evaluation the progress is evaluated and the questions will be asked so when you uh, clarify all the questions the plan response and strategies that will be taken or that will be submitted to the other department okay then after that there will be certain meetings which are conducted like plan and manage agency meetings will be conducted like how they will open that agency or a franchisee how it will be approved operated everything is provided then negotiate approval and product information with agencies then after that the negotiation is done so in that um, after that the negotiation uh, negotiations is done for approval and for The, because for getting the approval there is a fees which the marketing authorization holder has to pay so in that case or where they have to pay directly to the regulatory authority they will be they can do the negotiation also now what is the regulatory affairs what is the role of regulatory affairs after the drug is approved okay after post approval phase so first is compliance that is submissions of different variations and amendments renewals of the document and uh, pharmacovigilance activities are conducted to so making the documents related to the pharmacovigilance activities and the product information review the product information the prescribing information is reviewed if it comes up with any new indication or uh, new profile then the regulatory uh, inputs they have to develop the plans accordingly and what is the future of regulations that is also discussed in the post approval phase of the regulatory marketing sorry of the marketing of the drug product okay so now we have to discuss about the regulatory strategy so regulatory strategy like planning of the regulatory affairs like how the regulatory work is done how it will be done how it will be followed who will be responsible for doing what activity then addressing critical development issues which are dynamic and changes during the process so address the critical development issues what are the development issues while developing the regulatory strategy and what are the changes and dynamics during the process and then it will be discussed that how it then will be planned that how to register register the product in a global market okay and to, to also to balance the time cost time required the cost which is required and also the human resources which is required ensure that the company comply with all the system policies and laws for drug development and registration so the company they should uh, comply with all the systems with all the policies and the laws which are required for drug development and registration okay next is major regulatory authority of different countries so what are the different regulatory authorities for different countries for india it is cdsu central drug 
स्टैंडर्ड कंट्रोल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डीसीजीआई ड्रग कंट्रोलर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया सो ड्रग कंट्रोलर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया इज नॉट अ रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी इट इज अर्सन हु इज एट अस्ट पोजिशन ऑन हु इज अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ सी डी एस सी हु इज अथोराइज सिग्नेटरी हायर ऑन द हाइस्ट पोजिशन दैट इज द सी डी दैट इज द डीसीजीआई अदरवाइज द नेम ऑफ द इंडियन रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी इज सी डी एस सीओ देन For US, it is Food and Drug Administration (US FDA). For UK, it is Medicine and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency (MHRA). For Australia, it is Therapeutics Goods Administration (TGA). For Japan, it is MHLW (Japanese Ministry of Health, Labour and Welfare). Canada, it is Health Canada. For Brazil, it is Envisa (that is Agency National Degradation Vigilancia Sanitaria). then uh, for south africa it is mcc medicine control council for europe it is etqm it is generally ema european medical medicines agency okay so these are the name of different regulatory authorities who are of uh, different regulatory authorities who regulates different processes and uh, different processes related to drugs approval and drug registration purpose so now there are three types of uh, markets pharmaceutical markets regulated semi regulated and non regulated so regulated market is which is highly regulated where to register to get registration drug registered it is a very complex process so the regulated market is usa european union and japan semi regulated where the uh, drug approval and drug registration process is not that complex in comp it is complex but it is not that complex as comparison to the regulated market so semi regulated that is india asian countries russia china and brazil non regulated where minimum documentation is required for uh, for the drug approval process that is the african countries they are non regulated markets so now we will discuss that how the drug is approved in various regions so so we will discuss about us europe and india so first we'll start with drug approval process in europe sorry in us there are four type of applications which are filed okay and in india also we somewhat follow the processes which is followed in european sorry in us okay so investigational new drug ind ind is required to start the clinical trial in humans and sponsor files the ind nd application is required to uh, like to uh, market to get the permission from the regulatory authority to market the drug and the person who files that application that is the manufacturer so after confirming the safety and efficacy of the drug an application to manufacture and sell the drug in the us is filed then abbreviated new drug application and so application for the approval of generic drugs they it must demonstrate the product is that is the product is bioequivalent to the previously approved brand name product so the responsible person is generic uh, drug manufacturer then bla bla is biological licensing application so biological products are approved for marketing under the provisions for the public health service act okay so these are the few applications which are filed so in uh, short you can remember that ind it is filed for a uh, new drug application for uh, application it is filed for getting approval to conduct the trials on humans nda new drug application is the application which is filed for getting the marketing approval and is the application which is filed for getting the marketing approval of generic drugs okay and bla is the application which is filed for the marketing approval of biological products first is investigational new drug application so how it is filed and what are what are the activities which are done so first the applicant or the drug is sponsored they will file the application and which is reviewed by cder cder is center for drug evaluation and uh, drug evaluation and research so there are different departments which comes under cder and they review the application on different aspects that is medicinal uh, chemistry pharmacological and toxicological and statistical so when all these reviews are done then safety review is done okay then safety review when safety review is completed if the safety review is acceptable uh, for the study to the protocol means as per the protocol uh, the safety review is uh, acceptable okay if no the review is not acceptable then the decision is on hold then after that whatever the changes are required if they are done 
uh, the decision is on hold and that will be notified to the sponsor. Then sponsor again, they submits the new data and then the whole procedure again, it is followed. And if the safety acceptable, safety review is acceptable, if yes, then all, then all the reviews are completed. If all the reviews are completed. Now, one more condition is if the chemical decision is like if the decision is on hold, but uh, uh, from the chem from the decision from the meetings which are conducted, if it is no ling uh, longer required that it should be on hold, then it is checked that all the reviews are completed. If the chemical decision is uh, it is uh, if the reviews are completed, yes. Then whether the review is complete or acceptable, if it is acceptable, no deficiency is there, and the study can start. If no, then the deficiencies are there, then the sponsor will notify of the deficiency. The sponsor will again file the IND and again the same process will start and the study. And then after that, finally, when uh, there is no deficiency found, then the study will start. OK, so now the study can humans will start. So that is the investigational new drug application, how the whole process is done. Understood? Is it clear? The next is new drug application. So new drug application where the sponsor, uh, what, what happens where the sponsor, they will file the NDA. If NDA is, if, if then it is checked that whether this application is fileable or not. If the application is fileable, it will be reviewed by CDR. If not, it is refused to file the letter. Refused to file, that letter is issued to the applicant. Then after that, it will be reviewed. Medical review is done, chemistry, pharmacology, statistical review is done, microbiological review is done, biopharmaceutical review is done. Then meeting and advisory committee meeting will be held. And then after that, is the review complete and acceptable? If no, the review is not complete and acceptable, the additional info information can be requested. If yes, then sponsor again, then sponsor revises the application and then if the review is complete and acceptable if yes then the labeling review is done if the labeling review is acceptable or not if the labeling review is acceptable then inspection site or inspection of the site is conducted and the report is submitted if yes then the nda becomes action nda becomes an active nda becomes active and it will be ready the product is ready for marketing and if no then information from the review labeling review is not done, the inspection of sites is not available, then there will be pending satisfactory result. The result will be pending when this process is, will be complete, then the NDA will be, will be in action. So this is how you can file a new drug application. This is what happens when you file a new drug application. The next is ANDA. ANDA is abbreviated new drug application. So for ANDA, uh, the applicant defiles the ANDA. If the ANDA is acceptable or complete, if no, then refuse to file issues, then the applicant and send to the applicant. If yes, then it is reviewed by OGD. OGD is Office for Generic Drugs, and they will be reviewed bioequivalence review, chemistry or microbiological review, labeling review, and the request for plan inspection is reviewed. If yes, the bioequivalence review is acceptable and chemistry and microbiological review is acceptable. If yes, then approval, approval inspection will be conducted if the pre-approval inspection is conducted and everything is all right, then ANDA is approved. If the approval, after inspection approval, if everything is not right, then approval deferred pending satisfactory result will be reported. And if chemistry and microbiological reviews is not, not acceptable, then no approved letter will be given. Or if the biological or the, sorry, bioequivalence review is not accepted, then the bioequivalence review or the deficiency letter is submitted. Okay, then what is the drug approval process in Europe? So in Europe, we, there are four processes which are generally followed. Decentralized process, centralized process, MRP, mutual recognition process, and the fourth one is the national process. So before the drug is approved to be marketed in the European Union, sponsor has to go through clinical trial application, they have to submit the CTA if it is submitted on the member state level. And MAA, which is a marketing authorization application, if the application is submitted at a member state and also at a centralized level. There are four types of procedures, centralized, decentralized, mutual recognition procedure, and national procedure. 
So in the centralized procedure, it allow the so in the centralized procedure, the application is granted for marketing authorization, which is valid throughout the European Union, and it results in single authorization valid in European Union, Norway, Iceland, and Lanchester. Okay, and the application is evaluated by the designated approver, a reporter, and it takes approximately one two hundred and ten days time of the for final approval. So centralized procedure is mandatory for. the products which are derived from biotechnological processes such as genetic engineering which is intended for the treatment of cancer aids diabetes neurodegenerative disorders or autoimmune disease or those who are designated as orphan medicines so for all these products it is necessary to get the centralized procedure done the next is mrp mrp is the mutual recognition procedure So the product register in one country is mutually recognized by the other country. So here the application form is submitted to only one country during the initial registration process. Okay, and the same application with some regional changes that is accepted by another member country. Okay, so there will be an assessment report for reference of the member state that is viewed before granting the approval. Okay. the following product cannot be registered through mutual recognition process that is orphan medicinal product biotechnology based product specified aids and cancer medicines specified antivirals specified medicines for neurodegenerative disorder including diabetes and specified medicines for autoimmune diseases so for those type of diseases there are various uh, uh, there are the procedure which is centralized procedure which is to be followed now how this mutual recognition process is done the applicant submits the application to the rm within 60 uh, rm then rm very rm uh, rms sorry rms is the reference membering state in which the drug is already approved and cms is a concerned membering state in which the drug has to be approved now within 90 days time the rms they distributes the support to cms okay then after that the cms validates the application so cms is also having or uh, 90 days time and then after that the cms approves the assessment report and hence the marketing authorization is granted to each of the product the next is the decentralized process so the product is recognized by a group of members country uh, uh, member countries simultaneously so the decentralized process what happens the product is organized by a group of member countries and uh, followed then the then from those the marketing authorization can be taken in several member states so based on this assessment report the rms and uh, prepared by the rms and any comments by the cms marketing authorization can be granted so on the basis of the as assessment report which is submitted by rms and which is made by uh, or any comment or any feedback which is there from cms then marketing authorization is granted so and for used for those products that has not received any authorization in the european country and this product or this process is applicable to only those products which are not at all available in the european market uh so this is a decentralized process in which the information on quality safety and efficacy is collected to and sent to rms risk manage uh, reference management state for comfort authority then within 20 120 days uh, sorry 210 days the draft is uh, made and draft is a draft assessment report is made then they went to cms uh, the concerned member state then concerned member state will validate the report and within 90 days the uh, the that particular state or that particular country they'll get the approval the national procedure national procedure it is a nationalized procedure in which uh, in uh, in one which allows applicants to obtain a marketing authorization in one member state only so nationalized procedure is that when the marketing authorization holder or the member state only applies in that country for marketing okay in order to maintain a national marketing authorization uh, an application must be submitted to the competent authority for the member state so first if we want to get the national marketing authorization then the application is to be submitted whoever is the competent authority of the member state now active substances which were not mandatory 
uh, under centralized procedure can obtain marketing authorization under this procedure. So all unnecessary information is not given here. Only the relevant information is given. And by that information only, the registration is done and the approval is granted. The timeline which is followed for this whole procedure is 210 days. 